I removed the glove box, the panel on the passenger side, the knee panel on the driver's side. The lower cover on the heating and cooling unit. Removing the top piece of the dashboard, the hardest part seems to be getting the grab handle out. Inside there's two little white tabs that you can see they're up in there, barely see them. But those need to be pushed in, not pulled out. Once you push those in, you can do one at a time. I had to use the handle of a hammer to get underneath the grab handle and, and really um, pry it to get it to move. Once I got it to move, it came out pretty easy. And I did one at a time, pulling them out oh, a couple inches at a time. Um, after the grab handle, remove the post covers before you can pull the dash out, the top of the dash out. I made the mistake of pulling it straight up and I broke some plastic on the clips. It should pull, pull out towards you. The headlight sensor that comes up through the bottom of the dashboard cover uh, is like a tor quarter turn and then it releases. You don't have to disconnect the wire. After collecting all the ballpoint pens and garbage that you find that got trapped under your dashboard, remove the four, uh, four screws that are on a bracket. There's one there one over there and then there's two more over on the driver's side. I don't know if there's any more I have to remove because there are more that are smaller screws but I'll let you know as, as I find out. Alright it appears that that top bracket all you need to do is those four screws that I told you about earlier and then you'll have to take the two screws out there there's one screw underneath the radio right in there and then there's two more over on the other side. Um, the whole dashboard will then get very loose and hopefully we'll be able to pull it out enough to get to the heater core. And we have to remove these connectors We're keeping the dashboard from, from coming out any farther. Alright, so underneath the steering wheel there's, you can see that main support bar that runs over from the passenger side. I disconnected, took those two screws off, those are 13 millimeter bolts, and then there's a metal bracket on that. I took that, um, I think it's called a knee cover that goes right underneath the steering wheel. That's held on with uh, four 10 millimeter nuts. Took that off and then that bracket came off next to it. Um, the dashboard's starting to loosen up a lot more now. There's this main metal bar right there. I don't know if I'm going to have to remove that yet or not. Still working on it. Um, I've also removed this uh, orange connector from the little fuse panel right there. It just didn't look like it was going to loosen up enough. In order to get more movement out of the dashboard I had to uh, to not apply too much pressure to it, I took the instrument panel out because it was uh, it was keeping the, the dashboard from, from coming out farther. Taking off the air conditioning unit, make sure you have the, uh, the unit uh, vacuumed out or sucked out. Let it, you know have somebody retrieve all of the of the uh, fluid. Uh, mine had leaked out, but. Um, I'm going to take it off right now. I'm going to disconnect those two bolts and put it back together and pull it off and try to plug up the um, the AC lines with something um, so that you don't uh, get air down into the system. You don't want any more air in there than, than you have to. I've removed the air conditioning lines and the heater lines. Um, the lines coming out of the firewall have the quick disconnect um, fitting on them that you'll have to get a, uh, a little tool that slides down inside there over the pipe and it releases it. They come off uh, fairly easy. 
Um, and then you'll have to remove all the all the screws in the firewall that connect the uh, heating and cooling unit. And there's a lot of them. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's one way down behind the engine. I don't know if I can see it. Six, seven. Uh, so pretty much any any screws on the firewall are going to have to come out. Um, in order to get enough room to get the heater core out, and see I can barely get those lines out from the firewall, you need to try to get it back as the dashboard back as far as you can. You might have to remove this ground strap here. Uh, that might give me a little bit more room too, and hopefully I don't have to remove this this ductwork. So I was able to get it back far enough, um, and I'm able to get the air conditioning or the heater core out. These pipes right here do do bend; they they do rotate a little bit, so you can do it and get it out like that. All right, the new one is in. I just got to put the screws on, and then I'm going to start reassembling. Hopefully, everything goes back the way it came off. All right, I'm having a hard time getting the the heating and cooling unit up flush against the firewall to bolt it back on. Some of the uh, the heating tubes had a hard time getting lined up to, to go through the firewall. But I was able to, I put a, a screw back on the, where I took the cooling lines off, I took, put one of the nuts back on, I put a claw hammer under it, and I used that to, to pull the, the unit up snug to the firewall so that I had room to put the nuts back on a couple of the bolts and uh, that, that was a huge huge help figuring that out. The one uh, bolt sticking through the dry the firewall that you do not need to take out that I told you to earlier is right down there. That just holds a the drip pan for the air conditioning uh, overflow. So don't take that one out. It's hard to get to also. Well, I now have the dashboard um, starting to come back together. Um, I've kept track of all my nuts and bolts and where they go, and hopefully I don't end up with any extra parts. Dashboard's all back together. I have heat. I would recommend that you buy a, um, a repair manual. They're about 25 bucks. It did come in handy for a few things. Well, it's all done. I, uh, I spent about eight hours on it. That includes me going to church for an hour and worshiping Christ. Um, I'm not saying it's a coincidence, but everything went back together great, and it, I have unbelievable heat. So I had one molding screw left over that I don't know where it came from, so make sure you catalog everything. Keep track of it, because there's a lot of screws. Um, I would definitely, if I did this again, it would probably take me about four and a half hours, I think. Um, it was just, just figuring everything out was the challenge. So hopefully this video helps. Um, I had to buy a heater core, which was $55, and I had to buy the tool for the quick disconnect fitting on the old heater core to get that off, um, and that was $10. So it was a really, really cheap fix. Just took a, a lot, a lot of time. Um, so you know, all things considered, I spent, I had an estimated $800, so I saved myself a lot of money. So hopefully this helps. Thanks. God bless.